Hello world, thought I'd do a quick response to some questions I've had about how those couple of records that I cleaned the other day came out. Now to start off with then, I need to introduce to you two female singers from the uh, late 70s and 80s who are, have probably been forgotten about. They rarely get a mention, but I think that's to the detriment of everybody else. And so I personally would say go and find these people because, because they're absolutely great. The first record, I need to take you back to the 1970s and the genre of talent show that existed then. Now, I hate talent shows with a passion, especially the ones that come from like the late 90s onwards, the sort of modern genre of it, which basically has to always have a villain on the judges and someone that is supposedly a more positive person for more positive. Let's put Sharon Osbourne in there, shall we? And all the contestants have to have a sob story. My nan's in constant pain through voting conservative. And oh, just really, it's just n nauseous in the extreme. But back in the mid 70s, ITV, God bless them, did a show called New Faces. It ran from about 1972, I think, till 1976. 78 maybe, something like that. So right round in, in, in the mid 70s. And when we were kids, my big cousin would organise us into performing talent shows to the aunties and uncles and so on. And we would judge it on star quality and looks and or success potential, whatever it was called. So yeah, New Faces turned up on YouTube because I love nostalgic TV. And so I subscribe to all the BBC archives and Thames TV archives and stuff like that. And one day in my inbox, along came an, uh, an invitation, as it were, to watch New Faces. And on New Faces, there are some winners that, you know, even today's modern audience will recognise immediately because very very occasionally these talent shows actually produce real talent most of the time they don't and you never ever get to hear of them again but no one will ever say that they've never heard Victoria Wood one or she was one of the uh, new faces winners in 1975 I think went on to have huge uh, fame, particularly in the UK, uh, one of Britain's best loved comedians, 2016, when the Grim Reaper was wiping away lots of celebrities. Unfortunately, we saw the loss of Victoria Wood, but she was fantastic. Lenny Henry, Sir Lenny Henry now, again, a comedian that we've grown up with and that people love even now, including the younger generation. Wonderful person, was once married to Dawn French, but uh, is no longer. But a comedian who was taken away from us far too early, age 50, in 1995, was another New Faces winner called Marty Kane. And that was the album that I cleaned and I said, oh, it's on Chevron Records. And Hannah said, why was Chevron Records terrible? And I said, because it was basically uh, a, an imprint of Woolworths. It was originally released in 1976 after the New Faces win to, to capitalise on that. She was a singer and comedian. And I think a far better singer than comedian, but you know, she got her own comedy shows on TV as well. Um, yeah, I mean, we loved Marty Kane growing up, you know. And in the 80s, when New Faces had a revival, she was the hostess of it, OK? So this album's called Marty Kane, Nobody Does It Like Me. It was originally released, as I say, called Nobody Does It Like Marty. This is a Woolworths re-release, and all they've done is change the title and the cover and put the songs in a different order, but I don't think that matters. 
One of the best things about this album, by the way, is the fact that uh, none of the songs seem to do an Apple Music content match. So I might get away with doing a needle drop and not getting a content match from YouTube, which would be quite nice. So it says on the back here, a Sheffield lady, outright winner of a top TV talent show that took her to star at Las Vegas, Miss Marty Kane. <laughs> I love the way that even in the 70s, females were addressed as Miss Marty, apart from being one of the very few funny... <sighs> How sexist is this? Marty, apart from being one of the very few funny female performers, because females can't be funny, just happens to be one of the best singing voices around, as this album definitely proves. Whether Marty sings a vintage standard like Body and Soul or a more up-to-date favourite such as Feelings, each interpretation guarantees that nobody does it like Marty Kane. Nice little bit of hype there for you. But, yeah, very few funny female performers if anybody has seen the, a film starring Sheridan Smith called Funny Cow, it was based on the life of Marty Kane, uh, or very loosely based on the life of Marty Kane. If anything, Marty Kane's life was worse than uh, the woman who is the protagonist in Funny Cow. But yeah, this is such a lovely album and for both of these albums that I'm going to talk about, I want to make up a little scenario for you of who I think owns this, the, these records. This person, as you can see, this is, what is it, 19, uh, it says 1979. I'm going to sort of make up the, the, the story of this. This person here has looked after this record. They've bought it. They've played it once or twice. They've then taken... Uh, BASF ferric tape cassette, put it in their music centre, their all-in-one music centre, made a copy of it and played the cassette and kept the record in good condition, which was good practice back in those days, you know, to try and avoid records being scratched and everything else. So this one, when I... Cause I've, I've had these uh, for a couple of months now and I have played this a few times before I cleaned it and it actually wasn't in too bad a state. There were some crackles and pops there that were a little bit in evidence but by and large it was absolutely fine and just playing it after the clean, I've only played it once since then and it really has come up an absolute treat really is worth cleaning records even if they don't sound that dirty if they've been lying around in someone else's record collection and before you play them give them a clean okay because this one really has come up it, it's just absolutely wonderful the highs are a bit higher the lows are a bit lower it's been recorded quite hot, this one. The transients and stuff ver are sort of verging on that naught decibels top limit where whereby anything above that is going to start hardening up and distorting. But it still sounds absolutely wonderful. And as I say, this one has uh, no content matches on Apple on Apple Music, so hopefully YouTube won't find any. And there's one particular song on here called Sour Love Song, which I think if anybody can sing this genuinely, given the experience that she'd had in a lot of her married relationships and stuff with men, where she was really treated very badly, she can sing it. And this song here, Sour Love Song, I can't find any reference to it anywhere except in relation to this LP. And so hopefully I could get away with putting that on my channel without anybody breathing down my neck and saying, you've got a content match, all right? 
This one, Elkie Brooks. Elkie Brooks. Back in the early 70s, there was a band called Vinegar Joe. It featured two up-and-coming uh, rock come R&B, come soul singers. One was called Elkie Brooks and one was called Robert Palmer, who we now know for Addicted to Love and Emerson, Lake and Palmer. And, you know, a, another great singer. Another one, unfortunately, taken away from us. Elkie Brooks is still alive. Well, it says she was born 25th of February 1945, which makes her 77. Siri doesn't want to talk to me while I've got my screen recording on there. But yeah, she's about 77. So yeah, she's still here. And what an absolute talent she was. And again, someone I think under-recognised. Okay, this is a, a compilation from 1981. Now the story behind the person that had this record, I'm guessing is someone who adored the album. Probably kept it under his or her bed, or at least the sleeve was kept under his or her bed. The record was played over and over again, then taken off, thrown onto the carpet somewhere, and another record put on, then this one put back on and played over and over again, and really has taken a huge amount of abuse. Not for them, the blank cassette and recording it on the cassette and using that instead because this is this is pre-loved in the most euphemistic form of the term pre-loved as you can see now i made a big deal last time about not believing the hype about those plastic covers i caused a little bit of debate on my last video about these plastic covers I really do think they're unnecessary, whether they're PVC or some other plastic compound that doesn't uh, melt and gunk up the, uh, the, the vinyl on the records. However, you know, this here looks like willful damage. Someone's stuck a sticker on it or put someone else's name on it and then they've peeled off that sticker the, the covers come off, you might just be able to see that there's a little bit of sellotape on there holding it together where the cover's falling off, but that's willful damage. And a plastic cover would not actually have stopped that person doing that to their record, all right? So that's essentially how these covers get into uh, disrepair quite often just by being badly treated. Don't badly treat them, then they'll last. So this is our Elkie here, All right? Very famous for having some wonderful cover versions uh, of songs. And I think this is a compilation, although it says here in the hype, Elkie Brooks has a way of making every song she sings her very own. And that's absolutely true. It's absolutely true. If I, when I mention some of these songs, you will know them. Pearls is a string of timeless classics from songs like Lilac Wine and Don't Cry Out Loud, never before available on an album, to familiar favourites like Warm and Tender Love and If You Leave Me Now, transformed by that special Elky magic for the first time. How fabulous. The songs on here then. Superstar, cover version of The Carpenters song. Fall If You Think It's Over, a Chris Rea song, but Elkie Brooks's version is equally as famous. Giving It Up For Your Love, don't know who wrote that one, but a uh, fantastic number. Sounds a bit kind of Rod Stewart-esque. Uh, Sunshine After The Rain, another one that I don't know who the original is by, but brilliant. Warm and Tender Love, same brilliant, nice and soulful. Lilac Wine, brilliant version by Elkie, but brilliant versions by Nina Simone and Jeff Buckley. Pearl's a singer. This is the song that I remember from uh, the late 70s. And all I can remember, you know, back in the day. Now, 
this is, you know, for me, this is why this is not a new album. It's a compilation album because this song was, I can remember right back from about 1977 and it's got this lovely little delicious riff Paul's a singer do 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 and it's just fantastic that little do 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 let's see if I can do it on the piano Paul's a singer she stands up when she plays the applause. Arnold is standing over there. He was a little gift that somebody gave to me. A late birthday come Christmas present turned up on Saturday. Round of applause from Arnold. So yeah, fantastic song. All right. Uh, Don't Cry Out Loud. Again, classic Elkie Brooks. Obviously, somebody else did it. But she has nailed that song. Brilliant. Too busy thinking about my baby. Sounds very Motowny. If you leave me now, that's the one done by the bloke from Chicago, Peter Satira. Yep. Uh, uh, I'll paint your pretty picture with a song. Fantastic and dance away. Just an absolutely brilliant album. Now, before I talk about the effects of the cleaning. You will find this song, this album. You will not find this album anywhere. You'll find another later Marty Kane LP, but she's re- released quite a few, and there's only one by Marty Kane on um, on Apple Music or Spotify, or whatever. This one is, along with other compilations. Now the Pearls version. So you've got to sort of you know choose this cover, right? It's very well mastered, right and. The one that's on Apple Music is one that was mastered for CD. Sounds like sort of a, a, a mid to late 80s job. All right. It's a little bit kind of lacklustre, shall we say. Now, when I bought this album, I didn't dare play it because I showed you it in that last video. It was covered in fingerprints, grease, dust, hair, whatever. It was in a bit of a state and it's really come up rather well. All right, playing it still sounds like there is somebody frying eggs and bacon in the background, which is a bit of a shame, but still the the clarity of the music and the and this sort of a and m records look out for any a and m vinyl that's on that label because something that they all have in common you know did from you know, particularly from the late 70s, early 80s, albums like Me, Myself, I by Joan Armour Trading is that the mastering is absolutely superb. And, you know, drums really have a kick to them. Bass is well textured. Treble is it just sizzles in a, you know, a, a very positive sense. You know, really is open and vibrant, does not chop your ears off. It's just amazing. And mid-range, I'm going to sort of stick my neck out and say that, you know, particularly on this album, I thought that the mid-range, the vocal range, was slightly sort of recessed a little bit, a little bit further back. Uh, But what a good hi-fi system will do is it won't put a spotlight on just the thing that they think that you should be listening out for. For example, when Elkie's singing, of course, we want to hear how wonderful her voice sounds. But we also want to hear 
the little nuances that are going on in the bass line, the little twiddles and stuff. The the we want to hear the kick of the drums and and you know the, the actual hitting of a drumstick on skin, for example. We want to hear uh, whether or not they're using a plectrum or using their fingers on the uh, the acoustic guitars, and you know we want to hear all of that. And this album. It has been, you know, the original pressing is so good at trying not to make the trade-off as being, you know, spotlighting a voice and everything else in the background, as I suppose you could accuse this of, All right? Yeah, the instruments sound fine on that, but it's just not a patch on this, all right? It's a shame that it's quite crackly, but... It's nevertheless just such a wonderful experience to listen to this in its, you know, first incarnation, uh, first pressing and just amazing, all right? You will find other Elkie Brooks compilations on Apple Music and stuff. They've been remastered and they don't sound as good for having been remastered. This has got punch and oomph without it being overly loud, whereas the remasters are, in typical remaster form, overly loud. So with that, I will leave you. I have got one shout out to go to a gentleman called Quinn, uh, who gave me some thanks and sent me some rather nice messages the other evening. Um, and uh, yeah, so thank you to you for uh, giving a thanks down there. If you want to give a thanks, I might give a shout out to you, you wonderful person who's watching this video. All right, so I'll see you later. Like, subscribe, share if you dare, and maybe give a thanks. Bye.